Hey guys, it's Jen here from Nails by Jen. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome to my channel. So you guys, I literally just realized this morning that I have not filmed a Spend Saturday With Me video for so long. So I had intentions of just filming a dollar store Christmas craft type of video. But after I got ready, I was like, Oh my gosh, I want to share these couple of items that I used this morning to get ready with you guys. So why not make it a Spend Saturday With Me video? I want to share with you an item. So I've been getting so many compliments from you guys on my hair lately. So I want to share with you guys this hair tool that I'm obsessed with. So I got it on Amazon. I will link it below for you guys. I also have a couple of other hair tools in my Amazon store, which is also linked below for you guys. So this is the Bonita Ekua. I'm really not sure. I'm botching it, I'm sure. It it's spelled E-K-U-A, but it's Bonita Ikua Beauty. So I have been seeing these types of hair tools, you know, all over social media, on YouTube for a long time. I love this tool. First of all, I love the color of it. Yes, of course, because it matches my Con Air um, items as well, which are white and rose gold. Um, but as you can see, um, it straightened my hair quite nicely. It's really smooth. It's pretty silky and there's a little bit of a curl on the bottom. You can see here. I have a little more curl in my bangs, but I think that that might be more so due to the fact that I used some rollers after and I just really, really went through it. So basically it's not round, right? It is more of an oval shape, which I didn't understand why at first. I still don't really know why it's that way, but my only assumption is that when you use a round brush, sometimes the round brush gets stuck and I found this thing my hair did not get stuck in it at all partly because I think maybe the shape helps but also because it not only has the regular wire bristles that we find in a round brush it also has the regular brush um, whatever you call these bristles that have the little bubble on the end and I think the combination of the two really helps to get into those roots um, and also not get stuck in the hair now I think if I had really Really focused harder on the root area and really pulling it upwards I would have had more volume but honestly I was just rushing because I have to film and I'm trying to get done and I was on the phone and it's just a thing so I was kind of rushing but um, I do really love how much easier this was than using my blow dryer and my round brush right and then like grabbing it and doing the thing <sighs> You guys, my arms would always get so freaking sore <laughs> when giving myself a blowout. But this is so easy. So the cord is a revolving cord. So it doesn't get like stuck and wrapped up or anything like that. It turns with the brush. And then you basically hold this end. I'm just going to grab my hair here and give you a, a little look, see at what I did. And I just basically did this. I started at the root, obviously, and I kind of worked under the root first, just like this. I just kind of worked under the root to get it um, make sure that it was nice and dry. I even went on top as well, similar like this. And then obviously I just worked down the piece of hair and I sectioned my hair out and then I just kept working it through like this. It's probably going to be staticky a little bit. Nope, not at all. And I will tell you, this was so much easier than using the brush and the blow dryer. So much easier on my arms. Now, it has three settings, cool, low, and high. I did it on high because you guys know, I just don't have patience. Um, I did put a lockdown smoothing cream from Evo in my hair, and I ha that helps with heat protection and frizzies and flyaways. So it really, really works, you guys. I love this. Now, I know some of them talk about, like, they have ions or I don't know, whatever in them that are supposed to smoothen your hair. I don't know if I believe in all of that. What I will tell you is it was way easier. It's pretty. It didn't get stuck in my hair and it was quicker than using the blow dryer and the brush for me. It was my arms as, as big as this is and as heavy looking as it is, my arms are not sore at all, which they normally would be. So the other item I want to share with you guys is a mascara because I have been on the hunt for... Um, a good mascara. I, I do use like falsies, the glue on falsy ones. Um, and my favorite ones of those, I will share them with you guys, are the Kiss brand Looks So Natural. I absolutely love these. They also have one um, that is called Little Black Dress and it just has a little bit more of a thicker band at the top here. So sometimes I just find they they don't look as natural, right? These ones look super natural, which is why I love them. Um, 
so those are my favorite lashes. I'll link those below for you because I got them on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart and stuff as well. And then the mascara that I have been using that I just have seen everywhere was the um, Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. It's waterproof. And I will say I did like this. Let me just show you the wand as well. I, I did really like it. There's just a few things that I don't love about it. So for me, I think pretty much every woman wants a mascara that does not clump, right? So generally I'm not looking for super thick lashes. I'm more am looking for something to lengthen them and keep them separate because I just don't like that thick clumpy look on myself. Um, and I find that this one, obviously it's a voluminous mascara that this one does kind of clump a little bit more. It's a little more spider leggy or whatever you call it. But the one thing that I loved about it, well, it's a love and hate, is that it does not smudge at all for me. I have super oily eyelids or something and it's particularly gotten worse. I honestly think since I've turned 40, it's gotten worse. Any mascara I use within an hour is like all cakey and smudgy, like on the inner corners of my eyes. It's smudgy here. This stuff does not do that. So why I say it's love-hate, because also it is like impossible to remove. I literally tried four different eye makeup removers and I it, they didn't do anything. Literally the stuff would not come off. Now I did finally find an eye makeup remover that works and I believe it is Neutrogena. Um, I don't have it up here, obviously. I will take a picture of it and stick it in the corner here for you guys. And I will try to link everything below for you that I can. Um, you can also go to my Amazon store. I obviously have everything that I love in my Amazon store. So that is why it was a love-hate relationship with this mascara for a while. But now that I found something that can remove it, I do really, really like this. I just don't love how they look. So years ago, I used to use a mascara um, and I believe it was L'Oreal. I threw out the container and then I went to the store and they I couldn't find it. I just thought they were out of stock. And literally, it's just... I've never been able to find it ever again. I don't know what happened. It was like, poof, it's gone. It was double-ended. So one end had a black wand and the other end had a white wand. The white wand was a primer that you would put on and then the black wand was the mascara. And I am telling you guys, I used to get compliments on my lashes all the time because people thought they were like, I don't know, falsies. They would ask me, are those your real lashes? I'd be like, yes, they are with a little bit of extra zhuzh, you know? I had to use the mascara to make them look amazing. But it lengthened them so nicely. They did not clump. They t stayed really, really separate. Oh my God, it was the best. I don't know what happened. And I, I cannot even find an image. I'll try searching again to see if I can find it. But I have not even been able to find them like it online anywhere. So if any of you used to use that mascara, if you remember it from back in the day, I'm talking like, oh my gosh, probably 10, 8 to 10 years ago. If anybody knows of this mascara, please let me know, first of all, if you can still get it. And second of all, if you even just know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comment section below. So I have been on the search for more of a lengthening mascara as opposed to a volumizing mascara. I watched a few YouTube videos, read some articles, and I found that this cheap one from Wet n Wild, it's called Mega Length, actually showed up a couple of times. And the fact that it's like only $5 Canadian, I think it was like 5 something, which means in the US it'll probably be three something. I was like, yeah, let me give it a shot. Now, I don't know if it is waterproof because I don't think that it said anywhere if it was, which tells me it's probably not. Um, so it might smudge. I don't know. I've had it on now for probably an hour. Um, so I haven't had any, I don't see any smudging yet. So there we go. And... The wand is much thinner, and from the research that I've done, when you're looking for a mascara that is a lengthening mascara, you want a wand that is relatively thin and might just be a little bit thicker, like this one you can see is slightly thicker in the center, whereas the volumizing wands are more shaped like this. They're really big wands, right? And they have a lot of like bristles, right, like that. This one is more of thinner 
um, individualized bristles so they can really comb through those lashes. So let me just give you a close up look. I did not do a before and after you guys. I just was not planning to do all of this originally, but they do definitely look a little bit longer. I do like that they're not super stuck together. I mean, of course you have some that get stuck together, but they're relatively separated. And this is two coats of the mascara. So I, so far, am really liking how it looks. Um, I am just curious of, obviously, the wearability. I won't know till the end of the day, but I will kind of, I will hopefully try to remember by the end of the day to do just like a follow-up and what it looks like. I also picked up another one. Um, while I was looking for the Wet n Wild one, I came across this one. I have never even heard of the brand. It was at um, my local grocery store called Superstore. In Canada, we all have them. So the brand is called Essence, and this one is called Volume Stylist 18 Hour Lash Extension Mascara with Lengthening Fibers. So I'm assuming because it says volume that it's also a volumizing mascara, but when I pulled out the wand, it definitely looks more similar to the Wet n Wild wand where it's a little bit skinnier and just has a little bit more of um, a, a thickness in the center and the bristles are a little more separated. So I have not tried this one yet. The next time I film, like next weekend, um, I will definitely um, check it out again. I don't know if this is waterproof, but it says up to 18 hours hold. So that's a big deal. So this one is the one I'll be trying next. So today I just have the Wet n Wild one on and I'll, like I said, I'll keep you guys posted. So I wanted to share those two items with you guys. Now I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to get to crafting. So I have like an obsession with laying at night, especially if I wake up early in the morning, I go on YouTube and I look at Dollar Tree, um, either Dollar Tree haul videos, Dollar Tree DIY videos, Dollar Tree Christmas videos, Dollar Tree fine, basically anything Dollar Tree related. Now let me just preface by also saying y'all in America, you guys have the best stuff at your Dollar Trees. We do not get half the stuff here in Canada that you guys have at your Dollar Trees. You are blessed by Dollar Tree. So I did find some items here that were similar, maybe not exact, but similar to some of the items that I had seen on some DIY videos or Christmas videos, um, etc. And so I'm going to do some crafts for you today. They're nothing crazy, nothing super hard or difficult. They're all Christmas related. Some of the items I will likely be using in my nail room, which keep in mind, guys, I'm going to actually be doing a Christmas nail room decor video with Talia and Sarah from Sarah's Nail Secrets. It's going to be a collaboration video. Um, we will all be sharing each other's videos. I don't know how many other ladies are in it, but there's several ladies that are going to be in it. So I will be using some of these items to decorate my nail room. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then the other items I'll just be using throughout my house when I decorate my house, which I'm going to be doing next weekend. That's also when I'm decorating the nail room. So I'm really excited for all of that stuff. So I'm going to take you downstairs now and I'm going to get into my dining room, which if you have not seen, I did a little video on a my dining room, doing a dining room makeover. So I will link that below for you guys as well, if I can remember. There's going to be a lot of links down below for you guys in this video. I'm really excited to be hanging out with you guys today because I, I totally didn't even realize I have not filmed one of these videos for so long. I wish I would have filmed getting ready because that's kind of fun too. I'm not like a super hair or makeup guru at at all like not at all but also you guys let me just tell you I have a girlfriend who has one of those subscriptions to it's not ipsy I forget what it's called it's it's the next one up it's like a little more expensive and every time I go over there and see her which we don't get to see each other very often but when I do go over there she always lets me look through her like bag of stuff that she's not going to use and she gave me like seven palettes of eyeshadow and you guys I forgot I even had them and didn't use them today like, what the heck I'm just not a makeup guru but oh my gosh maybe I should show you these okay let me just go through these because it's a spend Saturday video and you know we have all day so this one is called hip dot on the back it says Zion it is pretty look at all of that shimmery gorgeousness let me just take this plastic off so you can get a better look so nice so many colors all right so this one is ace beauty and it's called nostalgia so freaking pretty 
Let's see. Oh, this one is like wild. This was one she was like, you should use this to make um, acrylics or something. But I just kept it because you never know. It's definitely a wild, wild palette, but you never know. A girl might use this. Super, super vibrant and pretty. And then this one is so cute. Look at the packaging. Breakfast in Bed eyeshadow palette. Beauty Bakery. So freaking cute. Let me see the colors. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, this is like mauves and navy. Really neutral. Super, super pretty. Like, I totally should have used this one today. Guys, I am so low maintenance. I, yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad this thing. This one, again, look at the packaging, you guys. This one is called The Queen, Eloise. The Queen lies in all of us. So Eloise is the brand. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. Like, look at the shimmers. I don't even think it's, like, showing because I don't have, like, a flash or really good lighting in here. But they are so, like, these will last me a lifetime. And I mean, if I kept my Avon ones for 20 years, <laughs> you all, you makeup artists out there are just cringing right now. I'm sure of it. I am so sure of it. And it's okay. It's okay. And then this one is called Violet Voss is the brand name. All of you forever. That's cute. And again, it's kind of like more, oh my goodness, these shimmers, you guys, the ones on the top, like up here, holy crap, holy, they're super shimmery. They're just not showing very well in my camera. I apologize. But this is also a really nice palette. Really, really nice. So yeah, I got a ton of makeup and I didn't use it. <laughs> Okay, guys, wait. Before I go downstairs, I also want to share with you this um, earring rack that I purchased also on Amazon. I freaking love this. I literally used to just have all my earrings thrown in one of these little drawers here, and it was so annoying to find the matches to them and everything, so highly recommend. Again, it is linked in my Amazon um, store. I have all of these items, I believe, in my beauty section. guys here I am in the dining room ready to get to crafting and last night I also did some Christmas wrapping people I am ahead of the game yes I am so I want to know in the comment section who of you loves wrapping gifts I actually really love wrapping gifts now I don't have a hundred gifts to wrap so maybe that's also why I enjoy wrapping them because I don't have so many but I got this wrapping paper both of them last year at winners and I'm gonna be so sad when I run out because it's so stinking pretty and I love just adding like bows and little embellishments these are just like um ornaments I think that I got at Superstore last year rose gold this one does not have a bow because it's going to be traveling with me and then this one is silver which doesn't really go with the color palette but I didn't have any gold um whatever this paper is called. It's very rubbery and plastic, so it doesn't tear. And then I just tried to add a little bit of gold accents for that one. I still have one gift to wrap because one of the things that I'm making today is going to go in that gift. It's all right, guys. So the first little craft is going to be this candle holder. So as you can see, I've got this green tea light holder, and then I also have this glass votive or tea light holder. So on the YouTube video that I saw, they were actually using pillar candle holders, but we don't have those at our um, Dollar Trees here. So I just grabbed this tea light one. So as you can see, I'm going to end up gluing them together like this, and then I'm going to end up spray painting them. So the first thing was I needed to take off all of the tags. Now lots of people have been using the blow dryer method to remove any kind of stickers or tags and I have not tried that yet. I honestly forgot to even think about trying it so I'm so used to just using acetone. So what I do is I just peel off all of the paper and if there's a little bit of paper left that's totally fine and then I just use some acetone on a paper towel and I just rub off all of that sticky residue and if there's any little bits of paper and it 
really removes it very well. Now, of course, you cannot do this if it's on plastic because the acetone will melt the plastic, but on glass, you absolutely can. So the next step is to go in with some glue. So I'm using both E6000 and a hot glue gun. So the hot glue gun is something that sets it immediately and the E6000 is more for longevity. So I'm just going along the edge with the E6000, a very, very thin bead. It doesn't have to be thick. And if some of it drops inside the holder, it's totally fine because we're going to be spray painting. And then I went around with the hot glue gun as well. And again, just a thin bead and I flipped it upside down so I could make sure I was getting it right in the center. I gave it a good push to make sure it was set. And then I went around again with another bead of the E6000 just to make sure that it was really, really good and stuck on there. And here we are immediately. It's stuck down because of that hot glue gun. Now I finished off doing the second one and then I took them out to the garage. And I'm using this Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover flat white paint. I wanted it to have a matte look. I purchased that on Amazon as well. And I just gave them two coats. I did go in with a second coat after the first one was dry because it wasn't completely covered the first time. Now I'm doing this in my garage, which is cold. So as you can see, I have a little heater there just so that it helps it to dry. So another thing to note is that the glass candle holders that I purchased are different heights. So you can see the one on the right is a little bit shorter than the other one. And I did that on purpose. I wanted them to have different height levels. So basically after that second coat of paint is on, it is done. And you will see at the end of all the crafts, I show you what they look like with a candle lit inside of them. All right, guys, so craft number two, I found this little Christmas tree at the Dollar Tree for $1.25, and I thought it was super cute, but of course it does not go with my color scheme. So one thing I noticed when I got home was that the star was broken. I think it broke in my bag, and I just glued it down with some hot glue, fixed up, really easy, good to go. And then I got these brushes from the Dollar Tree. It's an eight pack for $1.25. I'm just going to use the small one, and I'm also going to use some white crafting paint, and I think I got this stuff at Michael's, maybe the Dollar Store. Everybody has craft paint. Now, of course, you could absolutely spray paint this, but not everybody has spray paint on hand and most of us do have crafting paints. So I figured I would just show you guys how to do this with crafting paints. I ended up doing two coats of the paint. Now, if you wanted it to be really, really covered well, definitely do a third one, but I just went in with two coats. I let the first coat completely dry before applying the second one. And you guys, this stuff dries so fast. As we know, if you're anybody who ever uses crafting paint, it really dries super quickly. And then I got the second coat on there as well. So I also wanted to add a little bit of pink because you guys know I'm a bit of a pinkaholic. So I have this blush pink paint as well. I don't remember where I got it, probably Michael's. And I just used the same brush and the paint is still wet. The white paint is still slightly wet. And I just went along vertically and drew strokes and just kind of dry brushed a little bit of that pink on. I didn't want to add a lot, just a little bit. And I think it added the perfect amount of that pink. So again, then I let that completely dry and I found these pearls in one of my crafting drawers and I thought they would be really, really cute to add as a little embellishment. So I just took one strip. Originally, I was kind of looking at it thinking, do I want to fill the whole vertical um, or sorry, excuse me, horizontal piece or do I just want to do one strip? I did end up just doing one strip because I didn't want to cover all of that pink. So I went through on each horizontal little piece of wood and I just added some pearls. It ended up looking so stinking cute. Now you could use glue if you wanted to but as I said these are sticky already so I did not use any glue I just stuck them down with their sticky back and that is it now this is cute as it is. I thought it was really, really adorable already, but of course you guys know I have to add some glitter. So I'm going to be adding some glitter onto the star. I'm just using some Mod Podge and I actually ended up just using my finger to kind of zhuzh it around because I didn't have a small brush. And I'm using this champagne glitter from Michaels from the Recollections collection. And that is it. That is it for this guy. I'm just going to let it finally finish drying and it is done you guys. And for our third little craft, again, something super easy and cheap. I got this little sign at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. I'm just removing the plastic. And then the next step was to remove the disc from the front. Now this disc was a little bit bent, so I just wanted to bend it back a little bit to straighten it out. And I am going to paint this. Again, you could spray paint it. The reason I'm painting it is because the image that I'm placing on top was printed off my computer. Um, I will link the website below where I got the image. It is a free image. 
and I printed it on regular printer paper which is a little bit transparent so I didn't want to see any of that image come through so I did end up putting three coats of this paint but again it dries really really quickly in between so the next thing I did was to take off this little block that raises that disc and I'm just peeling off the old glue because I will need to put it on with some new glue and then I have this scrapbooking paper um, pad that I got from the Dollarama it was four dollars you guys the colors in here are so perfect for my house so I wasn't sure what color I wanted to use as you can see here I've got the little printout from the online website where I got the free printout from she's got tons of different printouts for you guys so I of course gravitated towards the pink but there was also this teal piece that I wasn't sure if I wanted to use an opposite color and do more teal I'll also give you a little quick view of what is inside here there are tons of images you guys there's lots of florals there's some metallic ones um, again there is more florals and more florals some little hearts this one is so pretty it's like a vintage wallpaper is exactly what it reminds me of we've got these honeycomb ones there's another pink one and then this is that teal one so more florals and then that one in the front so this was the one I ended up deciding I wanted to go with because you guys let's be real I love pink so that was the winner Okay, so for the next step, the best thing is probably to grab a ruler and measure out the inside so that you know exactly how big to cut the square, but I was too lazy to go upstairs and get my ruler, so I literally just traced out around the square, and then I went in with my scissors, cut the square out, and then I just started sort of shaving off um, all around and just kind of cutting little strips off until it fit perfectly inside the box. Now, I will say that it fits almost perfect there is a slight little tiny tiny edge that you can see but honestly if anyone is looking that closely at my crafts they're just too judgy for me and they probably shouldn't be in my house anyways <laughs> so you don't gotta be perfect so then I removed it back out once I got it fitted perfectly and I also added a second coat of paint really quickly just while I was getting ready to apply this paper. So I'm just using my double stick tape. Again, this is something that I get at the Dollar Tree, no, the Dollarama, but I'm sure the Dollar Tree has them. And I just glued the paper down and then I had to take that block and re-glue that to the center of the frame again because this is an important piece in order to have that raised effect. So in order to cut out the ho 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 sign, I actually held up the paper to the window so that I could see the circle from behind so that I could place it in the exact perfect position and then I just traced around with my pencil and I cut it out with my scissors which was again super easy you just have to be very careful take your time and made sure that it fit perfectly over that little cardboard piece again I'm using that double stick tape and sticking this baby down and we are almost done with this you guys literally grab some hot glue stick on your little disc make sure that it is in the center the good thing about hot glue is you have a couple of seconds to move it around to make sure it's in the perfect position and that is it literally you guys this cost me like a dollar 25 because I had the paper the printout was free I had all of the other things except for the frame all right guys, so craft number four, I've just got one of my bowls here. FYI, these are some blush pink bowls from Tupperware and I am just pouring in some Epsom salt. So I've gotten, one of the bags was from Dollar Tree, the other ones are from Dollarama, but they were all $1.25. I've also got this bag of Mylar, they call it like fake snow or faux snow. That was from the Dollar Tree as well. And I am just putting it all in the bowl and mixing it all together, giving it a good zhuzh. And then I'm going to start basically filling vases. So this is going to basically empty snow I've seen this all over the place it is so so stinking simple and just such a cute idea if you have any vases so here are some of the elements that I'm going to be applying or adding on top of the snow so this is a little tree it's a dollar 75 these ones are from Dollarama the smaller ones I think were a dollar 25 now these do light up which is super cute but I don't really love multi colors so I am not going to be using them lit up and then I also purchased this little um, clear acrylic deer. It was $1.50. That's from Dollarama as well. And these little ornaments are so stinking cute, you guys. I did not get these at any dollar store. They were $6. I got them from one of my local craft stores. They're so pretty. I just could not resist them. They're so stinking adorable. Now, they are ornaments. And originally, I thought about cutting off that little wire loop at the top. But I ended up deciding to leave it on just in case in the future I did want to use them as ornaments. I didn't want to cut it off 
because then I wouldn't be able to replace it. So I just removed all of the ribbons and then I have these vases which are $1.50 from the Dollarama. Now these are old, they may have gone up in price. I have already had these in my stash. And then I found these picks at the Dollarama as well, super nice, pink and sparkly like rose gold and they're $2. There are feather ones and more like berry ones. I got three of each of those. And this vase here is actually from Winners. This is the one that I have on my dining room table as a staple and I switch it out for seasonal um, colors and, and embellishments. These tall vases here are also from Dollarama. I did just purchase those for $4. Some fairy lights from Dollarama for $2 and batteries to go with it. So I started filling up the smaller vases and I just actually used three quarter cup and it seemed to be the perfect amount um, for these vases. I didn't want to put a lot in there and then you basically just start putting your little um, items on top of the snow. Obviously you want to make sure that the snow is lying flat. So I used the smaller trees and then the little houses, which a couple of them I think I'm going to put into the nail room. Basically you can use anything on top of this snow, but look at this, how stinking cute is that you guys? So, so easy to do. All right, so next up I wanted to fill the um, vase that goes on my dining room table. So I did, I think two or three scoops, um, two cups I think I did in the bottom of this one. Again, it was just a very thin layer, but that's fine, you don't need a lot. And this is where I applied the larger um, clear trees and the little deer. Again, you guys, like how simple are these to do such easy decor items for Christmas and then I just used the remainder of the Epsom salt to put in these tall vases now I did not quite have enough that I really liked the way it looked so I did end up going back to the Dollar Tree and getting more later but you will see that later in the video and then I just started putting the fairy lights in now I cannot hide the battery pack anywhere so it ends up just actually sitting on the table and I apologize you guys I was not in frame to show you guys exactly how these looked but I just basically stuck the three picks in there and then I turned on the lights just to see how it looked and voila, it looks so simple and pretty. I love it. You could also add some Christmas balls in there if you wanted to on top of the snow or omit the snow and just put the Christmas balls in there. And you could totally stop there, but of course I had some rhinestone trim that I wanted to add to the edge of the vases as well, just to add a little extra zhuzh. So I'm pretty sure that I got this um, rhinestone trim at the Dollarama years ago for $1.50. And I'm basically just going to apply it at the top around the edge. Like I said, I'm going to do all of the small vases and the tall vases. And you guys, I am fairly certain, it might have been a couple of years ago, I was at Michael's and seen vases just like this for like 15 to $20, when here the vase was $4 and the trim was $1.50 for basically all of these vases I got off of like one wheel of trim. So if you guys have the time, sometimes it really does save money to just create your own decor or craft items. So I loved how these turned out in the end. What I'm going to do next is make a custom candle. So um, the Dollar Tree has these cute little tea towels. They're microfiber tea towels and they had matching mugs. How stinking cute. So I'm going to actually make a candle in this mug. So I also purchased from the Dollar Tree one of these candles, which is $1.50. It's just a white candle. And also I purchased some fragrance oil. This one is vanilla for $1.50 as well. So really, uh, what is it, like five fifty around there for the entire little candle and tea towel set. So the best thing to do is to use a pot that is as tall as the candle. It'll definitely help with melting. Unfortunately, I did not have a pot that tall and you wanna keep the temperature of the water relatively low. I have mine just between medium and low and it worked perfectly fine. And then you just place your candle into the water. So some of the YouTube videos that I saw said it would take an hour, some said a half an hour. Now I did not time it, you guys, but also mine did not melt perfectly because I did not have a tall enough pot, but it didn't take that long at all for the wax to start melting. So as you can see here, I lifted it up. Now the bottom half has started melting very, very well, but the rest is not. So I ended up grabbing a chopstick and I just started sort of pushing into the wax to push the wax down. It did take a little effort. It was really soft because it was already starting to melt, but I was able to get the wax down into the bottom of the jar and then it all started melting. So you can see here, there's just a few little pieces that have not melted yet. But what I noticed once it melted was it was a lot 
lot less wax or there was a lot less wax in the jar than I had anticipated. So I didn't think there was going to be quite enough wax. So I had removed the wick and I just hot glued it to the center of the um, cup that I'm using or the mug. And then I'm just wrapping that wick around another chopstick just to hold it in place in the center of the cup. So when I pour the hot wax into the mug that the wick will just stay right in the center. So next I added my vanilla scent to the wax and gave it a stir. I was not sure exactly how much to add, but I had made candles in Pittsburgh and we used about an ounce of scent to a very large candle. So I just used half of the bottle. And then, like I said, I just gave it a good stir and went in and poured it straight into the mug. So you can kind of see here, it's hard to see at this angle, but it definitely does not fill the mug. It's not even really, I would say three quarters. It's just a little bit past half. So I did also end up purchasing another candle when I made my drive to the Dollar Tree to grab more Epsom salt. three packs of the Epsom salt and one candle. I looked to see if they had um, more of that snow, like the mylar pieces, but they didn't have any. Um, and then I grabbed a plastic tablecloth because I also have to make, I call it puppy chow. I know everybody calls it something different, but basically it's that white chocolate cereal mix. I have to make a crap ton of it. So what I'm going to do is lay that um, tablecloth onto my dining room table and I'm just going to spread it all out there so that it can have time to cool. And then you guys, they have the cutest freaking Christmas cards. So I have two people that I need to mail some Christmas cards to. So oh, hello, how adorable are those? So that is it. I'm going to head home now and finish all of my crafting and get this candle done. <laughs> and then I'm going to make my puppy chow. I actually have to meet up with a girlfriend at five. Well, she's coming to pick me up. We're going for dinner. And then I don't know what we're going to do after if she'll just come back to my house and we'll, I don't know, have some wine and laughs or watch a movie. I'm not sure what the plan is, but um, I haven't eaten anything yet. And it's like, it's already one o'clock. So then I get to the point where do I eat something or do I just, you know, wait until dinner? I don't know. We'll see when I get home. I might just like eat something really, really quickly. Um, I don't even know what I've got in the fridge that I can eat really quick, but I'm sure I can find something just to get into my belly that'll tie me over till supper. So that's it. I'm just going to head. So home. here I have melted the second candle. I've added the rest of the scent and I'm just pouring it into that mug. And here is the finished product. I do have to clean up a little bit around the edges. And again, like I said, I used the entire jar of that vanilla scent and it looked so cute when it's done. I will show you guys everything here all put together. All right, guys. So here is how everything looks super cute the candle smells really really nicely 
I love my ho 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 sign. I think I'm going to keep it in here because it's like the exact perfect color. As you can see, it matches my chairs. And that little tree turned out so cute as well. I love these little guys. And these are the easiest thing to do. You literally can put anything in vases like this. Put some Epsom salts down and then just put a little item on top. And the candle holders turned out cute too. They're all dried up and they're spray painted in a flat white. I love this little centerpiece. And I don't know, I feel like uh, those big things in the back might be my favorite. Maybe just because they're lit up, they're so pretty. I don't know. Tell me which one you guys like the all most. Right guys, so I did decide I am going to eat something. So I've just got a few veggies here and I've got some Swiss cheese. And you know what? I'm just gonna eat it all. Like, I'm so freaking hungry. So I've got five little slices of Swiss cheese. And I've got a little bit of um, salad greens. So I have a salad here, but I'm just gonna actually like go underneath and grab out some of the greens. I can do a little bit of cabbage as well. And I've got some chicken cooking in the microwave. It's just heating up. And I've got some dill dip. So basically, I'm going to like make kind of like a little taco. I'm gonna put some salad in here, some of the chicken, and then a little bit of this dill dip. And that's gonna be my lunch. Hey guys, so I'm just gonna quickly watch an episode of this show that I've been watching, which is called Absent, I don't know if it's Absentia or Absentia, but it's A-B-S-E-N-T-I-A. It's on Prime, it's so good. It's basically like this FBI agent who was held captive and then I don't want to say anything else because you just got to watch it, but it's very, very good. I'm just going to get eating here. So like I said, I've got my little bowl of chicken. This is pre-cooked chicken thighs. You guys know I always cook them up. And like I said, I'm just going to grab a little taco shell, which is really just Swiss cheese, and fill it with some goodies and eat away. All right, guys, so I have finished eating and now it is time to make my puppy chow. I would love to know in the comment section what you guys call this. I know some people just call it white chocolate cereal mix, but I've always called it puppy chow. So I've got a box of um, no-name Cheerios from President's Choice. I don't know what they call them, Wheat O's or something like that. <laughs> and then another box of also President's Choice Wheat Squares. And then I also had some items, um, one item I had in my freezer already. So this was just some little, I think they're white chocolate chips or they might be actually yogurt chips. I have some Chex Mix that I got um, at the Bulk Barn and all of the rest of the items are from the Bulk Barn. So I got two big bags of pretzel squares. I love the pretzels in this because of the salty and sweet mix. I got some more wheat squares because I wasn't sure if the one box that I bought was enough. I also purchased some salted caramel chips and some score chips, and I thought these would just add extra delicious flavor, and some red and green M&Ms, and then some toasted almonds. So I need to make enough of this for all of my clients. I currently have 68 clients in my roster. So I got these two huge bowls at a liquidation place called Bianca Amores in my city and they were $5 or excuse me, $4. Of course I had to purchase them because well, simply just that they match the colors of my house. So what I'm doing here is putting the bowls on the weight scale and I'm going to measure out the weight of each of the items and then I'm going to split them into two and divide them in each bowl just to make it a lot easier for mixing and just to make sure that everything is mixed evenly. So this is all I have done so far. I have to get ready to go out for dinner. So I'm going to finish this tomorrow. <laughs> um, it's already starting to harden and everything. So hopefully by tomorrow um, afternoon, I will be able to get everything bagged up and ready to go because I'm going to start giving it out to my clients 
tomorrow, or sorry, this week, not tomorrow, <laughs> starting on Tuesday. All right, guys, so I'm robed up, ready to get in the bath. I did want to give you guys one last peek at the lashes because I am impressed. They have not smudged. They have stayed in place. I honestly think that little bit of smudge right there is from my eyeshadow. It's not from the mascara because as you can see, even right there, pulling that, it makes my I not eyeshadow, excuse me, my eyeliner. My eyeliner is smudgy, so it's not the mascara at all. So I'm digging that $5, can't go wrong. Way to go wet and wild. <laughs> so I'm gonna get ready, I'm heading out. I just wanna say thank you for spending another Saturday with me. If I can remember to do more of these, I will get back on track to doing more of them because they are fun to do. It's a lot of work, <laughs> but I do enjoy them. It was another busy Saturday and I'm still not finished everything that I have to do, but that's okay. I will get some more stuff done tomorrow. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, you guys. If you did, please share it with someone else. And as always, have an amazing day. Oh, and happy holidays.